Hence, if you can give another condition over, or so you can write simply, x and y z are not equal. If x is not greater than z, then obviously x is less than z. Right? So you can write x is less than z. So when you run this, okay, when you are having some error in the script, some syntax error. Syntax means you did something wrong or something. You get a message like this in Sophie Way. And it tells you that don't be afraid of this message. Script 14 out here, the very first line, script 14, that means the error is on the line number 14. Expecting a closing bracket. I have not put a closing bracket on line number 14. Hold on. Oh, oh um, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's not like that. If you run this, it's not line number 14. The line number is 31 out there. It says that on the line number 31, we are getting an error. On actually 31st line, it should be not a round bracket over here on the 30th line. It should be a curly bracket. Okay. When you run this now, you will see the output x is less than z. Okay, so if you do any foolish mistake, this editor will not run the program. If, even if I close a double quote and I forget to give a double close, and if I run this, I'll get an error. And it will tell you line number 31 again. Right? So make sure that your syntaxes are correct. You have given the right stuff in order to uh, not get an error. Right. So basically, this is a statement. It is about. It's all about Boolean type. It compares the values. It. It. The control will go inside this statement only if the condition evaluates to true. If the condition is evaluating to false, it will not go inside this statement. And maybe you can use else if and else, and do whatever you want to do. Fine. Now similarly, like any other programming languages, like any other programming language, there is a loop in this language, Ruby, a for loop. Okay, now how do you write a for loop? A loop, uh, well, it will be written like this for, say, I write variable say variable i with an initial value semicolon i less than 10 i plus plus put the curly bracket over here and, and it also starts with a curly bracket and ends with it what is this this is known as initialization this is the condition and this is incrementation or decrement i have initialized the variable i to 0 over here and i am saying that i will always be less than 10 and i plus plus and inside it, I'll write log dot info i. Okay. Now, when I run this, you will see that it will print values from 0, 1, 2, 3 till 9. What this loop will do is it will repeat itself again and again from the value of 0 to the value of 9 because the last, whenever it runs, it increments the value of i by 1. And till the time I value of i is 9, right, it will keep on running. When I value of i is 10, n is less than 10 is not possible, right? It's, it, it evaluates to false, right? So it prints the value, it comes out of the loop basically. If I write over here i equals to i plus 3, so what will it do? After every iteration, it will jump the value of i by 3. If I run this, it will print like this 0 3 6 9 fine it will print like this so this thing over here this loop over here it actually um, repeats itself again and again till the time some condition is satisfied right for example i can write a reverse loop i can write i can i'll just comment i'll just hold on comment this loop and I'll write a reverse loop. For i equals to 100, i greater than 0, 
i equals to y minus minus. So what will happen? It will start with 100. It will run. It will make the value of i decrement by one, and it will run till the time the value of i reaches one. When i becomes zero, it will simply come out of the loop because zero is not greater than zero. If I run this, you will see that uh, okay, I get stuck in a infinite for loop. Okay. This for loop will never end. Right? Uh, maybe I have done some mistake over here. We'll look at it. But this program is not terminating itself. Right? The mistake which I have done is I have written i equals to i minus minus. I should have only written i minus minus over here. And I guess my SOAP UI has also hanged. It goes out of memory very quickly. Um, so in this scenario, I've got no option but to end it forcibly. Now, this is one of the disadvantages. SOAP UI goes out to memory. The normal version of SOAP UI, it readily goes out of memory. And hold on, hold on. Yeah, I have to see the amount of memory it is using 70351. So I have to forcibly close it. Just hold on. So it's closed now, and I'll open. So make sure that you don't write infinite while loops, sorry, for loops, the way I have written. And now you will have to open SOFIA again. And I think certain portion of the project will also be lost, the coding and all which I had done. This will on and let it start now. So it is starting up now. Right, and in module two, Hold on. Uh, I had made a test suite in this test case, test steps, basic groovy. Let's see how much of the information is lost in this test. Ah, <laughs> okay. You see that I've lost, lost considerable amount of information over here, right? If statements and the variables and all which I declared. So I'll start with for loop again. I'll write that loop again. If I write for i equals to 100, i greater than 0. And again, another thing, the font, the font has gone small again. So you, I'll have to go to editor set, editor settings and increase the font size. So you should always save your program again and again out here, or you can keep in file preferences. And in your UI setting, we can say that put 10 over here so that the project gets auto saved, right? And I minus minus. Now you can write log dot info i. So when you run this, you will see that the reverse numbers are printed. Fine. Now out here. This form will be used a lot in SOAP UI. The if if statements will be used a lot. Right? I just, I just give you a small example. I just gave you a small example of if statements in the previous. Uh, uh, let me say, in the previous programming, way which I did. Unfortunately, I lost it. Right, but this will be used a lot. Right? Many times you have the need of writing a loop inside a loop. Okay, so you will also be requiring you know you'll also be required to do that, but that will not be much, fine. But basically, what you need to understand is a loop is something which keeps on incrementing or decrementing itself based on the condition. So you have to give a right condition, right? If I give i plus plus over here, this loop will never end. I am incrementing the value of i by one. I will always be greater than zero. So this loop will never end. So make sure you give a valid condition in a loop. Okay, so that's how it works.
fine so we will end up this module and we will move on to the next module remember this for loop okay you will it will be very beneficial for you fine so all right